All right, so today we're gonna tackle swapping out your Joy-Con shells. There are a few items you'll need to make this job a little easier. These items include Joy-Cons, obviously, some new shells, a Phillips double zero screwdriver, a TriPoint Y zero screwdriver. Now I've seen some tutorials call for the Y double zero, but in my experience, those will only strip your screws. So best to stick with the larger one. Some other helpful tools include a spudger, a pair of tweezers, and an opening pick. Starting with the right Joy-Con, we can grab our Y0 screwdriver and remove the four screws on the back of the controller. Then with our opening pick, we can wedge between the two controller halves and work it around the round controller edge. Carefully slide the two controller halves apart. From now on, we'll be using our Phillips driver instead, starting with the removal of the screw holding the back plate to the railing. There's some adhesive between these two pieces, and I find the opening pick helpful to pry them apart. Just a heads up, your components might be harder to separate than mine up here just because I have already taken my controller apart a number of times. With the spudger, we can use the little notch in the battery tray to separate the battery from the adhesive strips holding it in place. Grabbing a hold of the two wires on the battery, we can pull the battery connector straight up from the board. With the help of our tweezers, we can do the same for our antenna cable. Now it's time to remove the three screws holding the battery tray in place. Be careful when flipping the battery tray out of the way as the shoulder button cable is quite short. We next need to release the gray connector holding the shoulder button cable in place. And then we can separate the two. Now we can pull the bumper button from its enclosure. It's time to remove the vibration motor by first disconnecting it from the board. This is another piece that is quite stubborn the first time it comes apart. We can then wiggle the motor free with our fingers to release it from its adhesive strip. Next up is the joystick, and we again need to pry up its connector mechanism and separate its cable. After removing the screws, we can pull the joystick out of the housing being careful not to damage the dust shield underneath. Then we can remove the screws from the motherboard and lift the board up and out of the way. There is more adhesive holding the black plastic component and IR receiver bits underneath the motherboard, which also need to be pried off. Then we can remove all the buttons and rubber covers from the shell. We can now separate the joystick dust cover from the plastic shell and transfer it over to its new home. We can also transfer all the buttons and rubber covers to the new shell as well. And we can reposition the motherboard, making sure that none of the buttons have accidentally shifted on us in the process. After securing the motherboard, we can replace the joystick and screw it in place too. Using the tweezers and the spudger, we can reconnect the joystick cable and lock in its connector. 
Now it's time to reinstall the vibration motor and connect it to the board. These bumper buttons can be a little finicky, but just make sure the spring is relatively straight once you get it back in place. Switching back to the battery tray from our old Joy-Con, we can take off the trigger button by wedging our thumb underneath it and pulling up and away. Be careful of the two springs below the button, they might try to go flying on you. Then we can unscrew the shoulder button cable and transplant it into the new battery tray. This may be the trickiest part. We have to put the springs into position in the new battery tray and try to match them up to the nubs on the trigger button. Then we can press the shoulder button down until it clicks into place. If your springs aren't quite right, you can try to adjust them with the spudger or just take the button off and try again. At this point, we can reconnect our shoulder button cable to the board and lock it into place. Carefully flip the battery tray back over and make sure it's seated properly and that the shoulder buttons still move freely. Finally, we can screw the tray back down. Now it's time to line the antenna connector back up and press down on the cable to lock it in. After that, we can reposition the antenna wire and slide the antenna back into its slot. When connecting the battery, I try to line up the connector as best I can and use the flat edge of the spudger to snap it into place. If you have some double stick tape or if you can pull off the adhesive from the old Joy-Con, you might want to stick it onto the battery tray to keep the battery from moving around. Going back to the old Joy-Con backplate, we need to move the release button over to the new backplate. Just make sure that the little ear on the button points away from the edge. Position the back plate onto the railing with the cutout lining up with the shoulder buttons and screw the two together. Now we have to fit the railing into the top cover and slide the two halves together without pinching any cables in the process. The two pieces should join without much separation. Then we can grab our Y0 driver once again and close up our controller. And that's it for the right Joy-Con, let's move on to the left. Same as before, we'll start by removing the four external Y0 screws and prying the two halves apart with the opening pick. Then we can unscrew the railing from the back half and pry them apart as well. Moving on, we can separate the battery from its tray with our spudger and remove its cable from the board. There are three screws holding the battery tray in place. With the railing closest to you, remove the bottom left, top right, and far corner screws. This shoulder button cable is a little longer, allowing us to flip the tray over and move it out of the way. Then we must unlatch the cable and slide it out of the board. We can remove the bumper button before pulling out the vibration motor connector 
and wiggling the motor free from its adhesive housing. The cable for the minus button at the top of the controller can be unlatched and removed, as well as the three screws holding it in place. Next, we can unlock and remove the cable for the joystick, extract its two screws, and carefully slide it out of the dust shield attached to the shell. Now we can remove the remaining two screws holding the motherboard in place, and move the board off to the side. We can pull all the buttons and rubber covers from the previous shell. Do note, the rubber bits sometimes like to get stuck to the board. And we can remove the dust shield with our spudger. Once we reposition the dust shield in our new shell, all the buttons and covers can go back into place. We can then reseat the motherboard and screw it down. Remember to use the smaller screws on the top left and bottom right, if the railing is closest to you. We carefully slide the joystick back into the dust cover and install the two screws that hold it in place. Then, we can slide the cable back into its connector and flip down the locking mechanism. After repositioning the minus button cable, we can reinstall its three screws, making sure that the small notch above the minus button lines up with the notch in the cable. Lastly, we can slide the cable into its connector and flip down the latch. Now press the vibration motor back into its shell and snap in its connector. The bumper button can also be reinstalled at this point. Try to straighten out the button spring as best you can. Moving back to the old Joy-Con battery tray once again, we carefully wedge our thumb under the trigger button to unsnap it from its clips. Remember the springs underneath like to go flying, and they can be tough to track down. When all those bits have been removed, we can unscrew and extract the shoulder button cable and swap it over to the new battery tray. Place the springs into their new sockets and try to line the shoulder button up with its clips, making sure that the nubs on the button match up with the springs as well. Press down firmly to snap the button to the tray. If the springs don't line up perfectly, sometimes you can realign them with the spudger, but it's often easier to just start over. Now with the battery tray back together, we can reconnect the shoulder button cable and lock down the connector mechanism. When flipping the tray back into place, you may want to pull the cable towards the top of the controller to avoid pinching it. Align the tray and press it in place, making sure that the shoulder buttons still move freely. Then we can reinstall the three remaining screws through the tray and board. Now you can transfer over the double stick tape from the previous battery tray or apply your own tape if you want to avoid a loose battery. After that we can realign the battery connector and press down across it the flat edge of our spudger. The battery can then be pressed back into its tray. 
Grab the release button from the previous backplate and transfer it over to the new one, making sure that the small ear on the button faces inward. Next, we can realign the backplate and the railing and screw them back together. Carefully slide in the two pieces and work around the controller until they join. To avoid pinching any cables, the two halves should fit without much separation. Then we can reinstall the four outer tri-point screws, and voila, we've got a brand new controller. I suggest testing all your buttons, especially the release one, before reattaching your Joy-Cons to your console, but otherwise you're good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and if you haven't yet picked up your new shells or tools, we have everything you need on both our website and Etsy store. Check out all our links down below, and thanks so much for watching.